Part 1 of the film Zeitgeist, nearly 200 sources are cited in the transcript. Yet many of these sources are used more than once. For example, Manley P. Hall is cited five times. Albert Churchwood is cited six times. Timothy Freak and Peter Gandy are cited seven times. Edward Carpenter is cited eight times. Thomas Doan cited 19 times. D.M. Murdoch is cited twice. However, D.M. Murdoch also goes by the pen name Acharya S. Acharya S. is cited an additional 27 and Gerald Massey is cited 30 times. In fact, when the transcript for this film is examined in further detail, we see that less than 25% of these sources are original. The idea that Jesus is a copycat solar deity has been propagated by the self-taught Egyptologist and practicing Druid Gerald Massey, homosexual activist and philosopher Edward Carpenter, atheist professor John Allegro, and authors Peter Gandy and Timothy Freak, and Acharya S. Another source cited in the film was occultist and mystic H.P. Blavatsky and her book, The Secret Doctrine. Blavatsky's book, The Secret Doctrine, which was cited in the film Zeitgeist, was known to be an inspiration to Adolf Hitler, specifically towards his ideas about superior and inferior races. In The Secret Doctrine, she wrote, In antiquity and reality, Lucifer, or Luciferus, is the name of the angelic entity presiding over the light of truth as over the light of day. Lucifer is divine and terrestrial light, the Holy Ghost and Satan, at one time and the same time. She also wrote, and now it stands proven, that Satan, or the red fiery dragon, the Lord of Phosphorus, and Lucifer, or light bearer, is in us. It is our mind, our redeemer, our intelligent liberator and savior from pure animalism. Gerald Massey, cited 30 times, wrote for the Theosophical magazine entitled Lucifer, published by H.P. Blavatsky. Godfrey Higgins, Albert Churchwood, and Manley P. Hall were all members of the Freemason Secret Society. Manley P. Hall, a 33rd degree Mason, wrote on page 48 of his book, Lost Keys of Freemasonry. When a Mason learns that the key is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, the seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands. The Christ conspirators will suggest that the golden calf is Taurus the bull and Moses represents the new age of Aries the ram. They say that Moses represents the ram and this is why Jews blow the ram's horn today. Yet Moses is never recorded blowing any ram's horn and Moses cannot be identified as a ram by any interpretation within or without scripture. Yet another attempt to throw astrological allegories upon biblical reality are the claims that Jesus ushers in the age of Aquarius. In Luke chapter 22 verse 10, Jesus tells his disciples to enter into the city where they will meet a man bearing a pitcher of water. Acharya S. claims this is symbolic of Jesus or the supposed solar personification of Pisces ushering in the age of Aquarius or the water bearer. She also claims Jesus was baptized in Aquarius, the water bearer, hinting that Jesus will bring in the age of Aquarius. The age of Aquarius begins around A.D. 2150. 
Acharya S. then claims that Jesus becomes the good shepherd and the lamb in Aries, the ram. Aries is from about 2150 BC to AD 1 and has nothing to do with Jesus. Additionally, a lamb does not resemble a ram and neither a ram nor a lamb is a shepherd. She goes on to state that Jesus told the parables of the sowing and tilling in the fields in Taurus the bull. For anybody who studies the scriptures, it's easy to see why this argument is a fallacy. Jesus told parables in several agricultural metaphors, including fig trees, wheat and tares, sheep and goats, seeds, and many others. But where is the sign for these parables? Critics also claim that because Jesus' disciples, James and John, were fishermen, they symbolized two fish, which also happens to be the symbol for the age of Pisces in which Jesus was born. Are we seeing a pattern? To these critics like Acharya S, any mention of bulls is automatically accredited to the age of Taurus, any mention of fish to the age of Pisces, and any mention of water to the age of Aquarius, even though these analogous claims make little to no sense. The Christian fish symbol that we see on the back of cars was an early symbol for Christ and has nothing to do with the age of Pisces. The Greek word based on the initials of Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, spelled fish in Greek. Indeed, two disciples were fishermen, but Matthew was a tax collector. Simon was a zealot. Luke was a physician and a historian. Paul was a Pharisee and a tent maker. What is their significance to astrology? Indeed, Jesus fed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread. Later, he fed 4,000 people with a few fish, or more fish than two fish, and seven loaves of bread. So what? He also healed people, gave sight to the blind, raised the dead, walked on water, and cast demons out of people. But there is no astrological symbols accompanying these miracles. Besides, fish and fishermen are also mentioned in the Old Testament, which predates Jesus and was prior to the age of Pisces. Furthermore, the New Testament, written after the age of Taurus the Bull, also mentions calves. It's easy to see how these unsound arguments can be made wherever it seems convenient to these skeptics. Obviously, Bible stories abound with fish because fish were the most common source of protein near the Sea of Galilee. New Testament stories also refer to rooster, doves, donkeys, birds, camels, sheep, and goats, yet none of these animals would normally fall under the age of Pisces. Any allegations of 16 other saviors who all resemble the same characteristics of Jesus is most likely based on the book entitled The World's 16 Crucified Saviors by Kersey Graves. This book is an unreliable source. Even atheist Richard Carrier criticized, The world's 16 crucified saviors is unreliable, but no comprehensive critique exists. Most scholars immediately recognize many of his findings as unsupported and dismiss graves as useless. After all, a scholar who rarely cites a source isn't useful to have as a reference, even if he is right. Dr. Norman Geisler wrote, The only known account of a god surviving death that predates Christianity is the Egyptian cult god Osiris. In this myth, Osiris is cut into 14 pieces, scattered around Egypt, then reassembled and brought back to life by the goddess Isis. However, Osiris did not actually come back to physical life, but became a member of the shadowy underworld. This is far different than Jesus' resurrection account, where he was the gloriously risen Prince of Life, who was seen by others on earth before his ascension into heaven. Even if there are myths about dying and rising gods prior to Christianity, that doesn't mean the New Testament writers copied from them. Even atheists and non-Christian scholars have rejected this idea that Christianity has been borrowed from ancient myths. The well-respected Sir Edward Evans Pritchard wrote, The evidence for this theory is negligible. In sum, skeptic claims of Christianity being borrowed from ancient Egypt, 
India, Greece, and Persia can be disregarded as faults because there are no primary sources for these parallels predating AD 150. This is more than 100 years after the origin of Christianity. Before AD 100, all of the mystery religions were still mostly confined to localities, but after AD 100, they gradually began to attain popularity throughout the Roman Empire. Many writers use the late source material produced in this period, after AD 150, to form reconstructions of what they think the cults must have been earlier to their spread in the Roman Empire. So if there was any influence of one on the other, it was the influence of the historical events of the New Testament on mythology, not the reverse. Thank <laughs> you.